everybody. So in this um, video, what we're going to do is I'm going to provide you a little bit of an overview of the app. Um, we'll look at what happens when your app starts up, and then we'll talk a little bit about logging and a little bit about the main activity in your app, which is the first screen that's shown uh, when your app is launched. So I've got the starter code loaded into Android Studio, you know, the, the things that we talked about previously. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and run the app on the emulator so which you can see what's supposed to happen sort of out of the box, right? This is the code that we gave you. What we're going to be building this semester is an app that allows you to browse restaurants in the local area. We actually have provided you with a list of um, every restaurant in the Shambana area. Uh, there's 255 of them, which is pretty cool. Um, I've done things like remove duplicates and stuff like that. So like there's like eight Subway restaurants and there's only one in the list. Um, but we hope that, you know, not only will you have fun with this, but it might, you know, give you a little bit of a taste of champagne, right? Taste of Urbana, um, explore, expand your horizons a little bit, give you a sense of kind of like what's out there. Uh, so what we're going to do over the course of several checkpoints, um, over the course of many lessons together working on the MP, is we're going to start off slow by fixing some bugs and just, you know, straightening out a few things over the next few checkpoints. Um, and then eventually what we're going to do is we're actually going to get to the point where we're going to augment the app with some new features, as well as uh, pull some information from a social graph that we're going to provide you, uh, which is going to allow you to make restaurant recommendations. So we'll get to the point where you can open up a restaurant and see related restaurants based on you, you know, uh, based on some data that we're going to give you in later checkpoints. So now this doesn't work yet, right? Out of the box, I'll show you what's about to happen. Uh, when the app starts up and then over the series of multiple checkpoints, we're going to guide you through the steps you need to take uh, to get to the finish line where your app has, uh, has some additional capabilities. Um, now, it's normal when you're getting started with any project like this to, to feel a little bit intimidated. This is a, a big piece of code. Um, there's a lot here, right? Just getting Android Studio installed might have been a little bit of a challenge. Um, and so, you know, all I can say is, you know, be patient, take things step by step. Um, and we will help you every step of the way as well, right? So this is really, in some ways, the process of completing the MP is more of sort of a, a guided tutorial. Um, it's designed to sort of help you understand how to work in a more realistic development environment. When you build code, when you create things in the future, you're usually not starting from scratch. You're usually working on a project that has been, uh, has a lot of code that's been created by other people. You've been hired to help with it or assigned to that team. And now you need to come in, understand a little bit of what's going on and start to be able to contribute. And so the next sort of month of our work together on this project is really gonna be you know, this, this type of thing. And I was wondering how long I was going to have to vamp while the, uh, <laughs> while the build finished. But it looks like uh, the build finished. This can be slow. I mean, Android Studio, you know, you're, you're, you're simulating an entire phone. You're building an entire Android app. Uh, this is sort of a, a, a big piece of software. Okay, so it's going to load up. And what I'm going to see out of the box is a, a screen that allows me to scroll through a list of... And these are real restaurants. And there, there is an Applebee's around here. Uh, you might recognize some of these names as we go. Brew Lab Coffee is close to campus. Dos Reales is right up the street from me. Um, you know, Bangkok Thai. You know, some of these places you might have might have gone to, right? You might have eaten at. Dunk, of course. Um, so, you know, this is what you see uh, right now. And what I want to talk a little bit about is why, right? Like, why is this shown, right? Um, and so I have the project view open here in Android Studio. And I'm going to go over here and open up. Uh, a few files and we're going to talk about what's there and, and, it, and it, you know one of the things I want to point out is don't try to understand everything here at once and don't think that you need to. There is a lot of code here and by the time we're finished I think that you'll understand most of the code that we gave you but we're not going to get there in one day, one week or even one month. We're going to take time and we're going to work on it slowly together. Um, so you know don't sit down and think oh I have to read every line of code and, and try to understand what's in there. We'll guide you to the parts that you need to understand. We'll talk about them uh, over a long period of time individually as needed. Um, all right, so the first thing I want to show you is this file called the Android Manifest. Now, this file contains uh, what's called markup. This is a structured way of representing data in a format called XML. Don't expect that you've seen this before, um, but there is this file stores really important, sometimes we call it metadata about your app. 
So for example, it stores the name of the app that might be shown like on the Android menu, right? When you install the app on your phone, which you're welcome to do, by the way, if your emulator isn't performing very well and your phone is available and it's an Android device, you can run this on your phone, it'll work fine. Um, but there's information in this manifest that Android uses when you install the app to figure out what to do. Uh, one of the pieces of information is this information about what's called an activity. Talk more about activities in the future. But the simple way to think about an activity is an activity is a screen in your app. It's something that the user can see. 99.9% .9 of the time an activity corresponds to a view in the app, like a, a, a part of the app that the user interacts with where they can view data, click on things, whatever, right? And we're gonna look at some of the code that drives this activity in a minute. But what's in here is this uh, declaration of an activity. Uh, it tells Android where to find the class that implements the activity, which we're gonna look at the code for in just a second. And it also, this uh, piece of code here tells Android that when the app is launched, this is the activity that should be shown. So one of the reasons I'm showing you this is that there's really no magic here, right? There's no like, oh, how did Android figure out what to do? No, you told it what to do. Well, we told it what to do, and now we're explaining to you how this works. And so, you know, all the code that's in here is here for a reason, right? And every line of it accomplishes some very specific purpose. Um, we will have to do some changes to the manifest later on in the project, but so far we can just uh, leave this here and this is gonna work fine. But I just wanted to explain to you why this code runs, right? And so this is always a good question when you work on any project to figure out why does my code run? Like, why does this particular method run? Where does the code start running and, and why does that happen, right? And so the first activity that's shown in your app is this activity called main activity that we're gonna look at the code at for in a minute. And the reason it runs is because you configured it that way. You set up the manifest to tell Android to do that. All right, so now I'm gonna go into uh, this, my source code, and I've organized this. So the code that we've given you, I'm gonna open up main activity and I'll, I'll uh, make my emulator a little bit smaller so we can see the, the whole file if Android Studio will cooperate with me, okay. Um, so the code that we've given you, we've really tried to provide very idiomatic and also extremely well-documented starter code. So I've gone through all this code very carefully and tried to write down like what it's for and what it does. Now, again, you don't need to understand all of this all at once, but as we guide you into various parts of the app over the next you know, weeks that we spend on this, the code here that's commented will hopefully serve as a guide. And one of the reasons I've done this is because a lot of what we're gonna ask you to do in the project is actually mimic code that's already there. Why? Because this is a lot of how software development is done for real. If you wanna get a good start on a team in the future as a software creator, and someone asks you to do something, the best way to do that is to do it in a way that mimics and fits in with the code around it. You know, uh, if you come in and you're like, oh, I want to do things my way and I'm going to write the code the way I think it's supposed to, to be and I'm going to change everything, people are not going to like that very much. What they will like is if you come in, you look at the code that's there and you write something that fits in, right? Like that's a good way to get started. Eventually, once they come to respect you because of, you know, your abilities to create, you know, incredible things using code, then you could take more ownership over how things are. But in the beginning, it's useful to be able to just fit in, right? Like write code that, that looks like the rest of the code that's there and follows the same patterns. And so that's what we're gonna be do, doing really over the first couple of checkpoints, right? Is writing code that fits in with the rest of the project. To help you do that, I've written a lot of comments in the code that we've given you, and I've also tried to give you, give you code that sort of follows best practices as far as at least I understand them. Um, I'm not a full-time Android app developer. I'm only, I only do this as a hobby, right? Um, okay, so this code, now, the other thing I would really encourage you to do, and I'm gonna do this right now, is use, uh, use Google, right? If there's something you don't understand about uh, your, your app, uh, look it up. You know, Android is, the Android is not a niche thing, okay? Android is run on billions of devices all over the world. It's by far the largest software uh, development platform. And there's like a million Android developers across the globe. That's what uh, Google estimates. The Android documentation is actually really good uh, because it supports this huge community, right? So uh, the information you find online about Android tends to be very detailed and, and very informative. Now, sometimes it can be a little low level and it might be a little confusing or hard to understand when you're getting started. That's what we're here for. So come to the forum, ask questions. You know, there is no, uh, when you start writing your own code and solving the problems, we do want you to do that on your own. 
But when you're looking at the code that we gave you, there's no rules about cheating. You're welcome to discuss it with a friend. You're welcome to post it on the forum and ask, why is this here? What does it do? You're welcome to come to the help site and, and ask the staff about it. You know, it's totally okay, right? There's, there's no plagiarism when it comes to understanding the code that we've provided. Once you start writing your own code, that's yours and you should only share it with your collaborator or with uh, the staff on the help site. But as far as looking at the stuff that we've provided, you know, there, there are no rules here. We just want you to understand it and be able to figure out what you need to do. All right, so activities in Android have what's called a life cycle. There are different events that correspond to different things that happen. And one of the, you know, the first things that happens is the activity is created. And that happens actually before it's actually shown to the user. So you can imagine when the app starts up, Android looks in the manifest, figures out, okay, well, where is this activity that I'm supposed to create? You'll see that this activity extends something called the app compat activity. Um, and I've overridden this function called onCreate. And this method is called when the activity is created. And typically activities will use this as an opportunity to do some setup in ways that we'll, I'll just sort of summarize in a minute. Now, one of the things I want to point out is once you start looking at the Kotlin code in this project, most of this should look familiar to you. You're, you're ready. You know, you've seen this stuff before. It may be a little bit in certain places past maybe what you're comfortable with based on your work on, you know, previous homework problems and stuff like that. But, but you've seen these. There shouldn't be new concepts here, right? This is a class, right? Um, this is, it extends something. It extends the app compact activity. It also implements two different interfaces, right? We've talked about classes. We've talked about interfaces. This is one of the reasons why we wait to start the MP until this point in the semester is that working with Android actually requires you understand a fair number of advanced language concepts. And until this point, you really haven't been ready to see this, but now you are, right? We just talked about callbacks and anonymous classes, which are some other things we'll need to understand later. So, so you're there. There's a few things here. So, so Kotlin is such an elegant and powerful language. There's a few places here where I've done some things using idioms that, that you may not be familiar with, but that's not in code that you really have to understand. That said, if you see some of those things and you're curious about them, please do ask. And I'd love to share with you some of uh, Kotlin's more interesting and semi-advanced features, I guess. Um, all right, so for example, late in it, right? But there's, a, but there's a comment here about this keyword, right? So we haven't talked about late in it, but you know, we've tried to explain that and we're happy to talk about more what that means on the forum. All right, but let's talk about this onCreate method. So the onCreate method, this is now code that runs when the app is created. And we'll talk in a minute about how to see what's happening as the app runs using Android logging. But for now, I just kind of want to convince you that this code is, is, is running. And the way I'll do that is I'll remove, and I'm not going to go through this in detail. There's good comments here about what's happening. And you, you should go through this as part of MP0, this particular method, because there is a change you need to make here. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove, we'll talk more about this when we talk about MP1, but I'm going to remove the code that actually loads the list of restaurants into the display. So none of this is magic. Again, when your app starts up, it retrieves a list of restaurants and then it displays it on the screen. I should also pause and talk about something cool about the app that you're working on, which is that this is sometimes what's referred to as a full stack Android application. Inside this repository in code that we will talk about together is both a server that would typically run on some other machine, like in the cloud or on some server that you would rent uh, or that your organization would own, there's also the client app. So you're actually gonna to get to build both pieces. You're gonna to get to build the backend server, which is usually where data comes from and things like that. And then you're gonna to get to build the client, which is the, the part that the user interacts with. Um, usually these would be deployed separately, but we've kind of pulled them all into one place to allow you to have an experience of this type of development. I don't think there's anyone else that does anything like this. It's, it's, I think it's super cool. So we'll get there. We're not gonna talk about the server right now, but I just want to explain that that's what's happening. So, so there's server code that has this list of courses and, sorry, not courses, restaurants. And when the app starts up, it requests a list of restaurants from that server and then loads that list into the display. And what I'm doing right now is I'm removing the line of code that actually loads it into the display and let's see what happens, right? So I'm gonna rerun the app. It's gonna rebuild the code, it's gonna relaunch it. And I wanna see kind of what happens, uh, what happens then. What I'm expecting to happen is that the display should be blank. I should still see the search bar, but that list of courses that I see right now, Brew Lab, whatever, should, should not be there, right? 
Um, and really I'm doing this and you're welcome to experiment here. I mean, go for it, right? Have some fun with this, like figure out what this code does by, by messing around with it. Uh, but what I'm really doing here is just convincing you that this code is running, right? Because I made a change and now you'll see that the, the, the app works differently. Okay, so let's, let's put this back. The other thing I wanna talk about before we finish up is logging. So many of you have gotten used to uh, having your code output information as it runs as you work on things like our homework problems. And that's a completely cool thing to do, right? I don't want you to get the sense that logging is not important. It is very important. Uh, and having your code print stuff is a great way to understand what's going on. How do we do that in Android? So you can use Printlin. That will work. And let's see, let's see that happening, right? So I'm going to put a Printlin statement right here. I'm going to say Printlin on create run. Um, and then I'm going to rerun the app. Now you might wonder like, where do I see the output of Printlin? You know, cause this is totally different. In the past we were looking at output from the console and now we're watching this app run. When your app runs, what you need to do is you need to open up this log cat tab down here. This is where logs end up, right? And what you'll see, and I need to make sure I'm connected to the right, uh, this is, this is the right app. And you know, now, first of all, you're going to notice that there's a lot of output, right? Now, can I see the code that I just wrote? I can, right? It's right here. This happens during app creation. You'll see that the list of restaurants is back because I, uh, I uncommented that line of code, but also I see on create running. I just added this log statement. Now the Android logging system is a lot more powerful than this though. You can use Printlin, but there's another way to do it. And let me show you uh, how to do that, right? Now you might be wondering like, how am I gonna find my output in the, in the mess of all this other stuff that's being printed by other code that's running as part of my app? The answer is that the best way to do this is frequently by using what's called a tag. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do log, let's have this be uh, debugging. Uh, and then I'll say on create uh, ran something like that. Now you'll see that log is something I need to import. In Android, uh, in Android Studio, uh, when you see an error message like this, you can just hit import and it will give you some choices. I want android.util.log and then you'll see this go away and it's automatically added it to my imports. There's another way to do this where you can hit like control space and it'll just uh, automatically add it to your list of imports. So you can do imports manually, right? You'll notice that now my imports up here include android.detail.log, but there's no real reason to do that, right? You can do it automatically. Now this tag variable is defined up here and, and this turns out to be equal to main activity. And so Android's logging system, so when you work on big complicated systems, it's normal to have lots of different sources of information coming in about what the app is doing. And Android's logging system allows you to organize that information a little bit. And there's two ways that we do this. One is by setting a level. So this is a debugging message and there's different levels of message. You'll see down here in the log cat menu, I have everything from verbose, which is like the least important type of message to error, which are errors and assertions, which are very important. That means like something went wrong. And then debug is one level above. And what you'll see is if I change this, I see different amounts of output. So there were no error messages that were generated when my code ran. There were some warnings that were generated. Uh, and, and these are things that we don't need to worry about. Uh, and I choose info. Now you'll see that I see on create running. So when you use Printlin, uh, Android uses the tag system.out and it uses the level info. But normally we want to use Android's built-in logging system to give us a little bit more control here because it's going to make it easier to find things. All right, so let's try this. So I'm, I'm generating a debugging log message. The tag is going to be main activity and the text is the same. So let's run this again. The reason uh, that this is so powerful is that now in my search, I can search for only my tag. So I'm going to search for main activity. Currently it's rebuilding the app and rerunning it. Oh, I need to set the level to uh, verbose, right? So I want to see verbose. Everything verbose and above, but I only want to see stuff with the tag main activity. And now you'll see that the only output shown is the output generated by my, my logging message. And so typically this is what you want to do because it's hard. Otherwise you got to filter out all that other stuff, right? Now, you know, one of the things that we are teaching you or giving you a chance to practice with as you work on a bigger project is working on a bigger project, like some of these issues, when you have error messages with Android, they're not gonna be as easy to understand. You're gonna to have to think a little bit more about what's happening. When you need to actually log information about your app is doing, that's a little bit more complicated, right? This is all just a much more sophisticated, powerful system 
which makes sense because you can use it to build apps that run on billions of phones all over the world, right? So this is real uh, power and capability here. And if you wanna create things and change the world, writing Android apps is you know, a great way to do it, right? Um, so, okay, so we've done, uh, so, so I'm, I'm almost done. We've done logging, I think I am done. Um, so we talked a little bit about what the app is and where we're gonna go with it. Um, we've talked about the structure as a full stack uh, a full stack a smartphone application where there's a server here and the client. Uh, we're gonna talk about all of this later, so don't feel overwhelmed. We will guide you to the places that you need to go and we will explain little bits and pieces of it uh, one step at a time. The way that we've done things for the entire semester. We talked about the Android manifest and how it configures uh, what happens when the app starts up. We've pointed out that this onCreate method is what's called when the activity is created before it's shown to the user. And so this is where we do some setup to configure the display to do various things. And in this case, to retrieve the list of restaurants and load it into the display. And then we've also talked about logging, right? And, and how, to, how to add uh, diagnostic messages. Oh, I want to point something out. So one of the things that, that we're going to enforce here is that uh, we use a tool called detect to, to examine your, uh, your code for errors. And so we're going to detect is realize there's an unused import once I get rid of that logging. And then there's also some white space errors. But when I hit save, it's going to fix those. Okay, so um, in the next tutorial, what we'll do is we'll talk about the test suites and what happens when we... Uh, what happens when we grade your uh, submissions.